Welcome to Upticks. I'm Jake Falcon. I'm the founder of Falcon Wealth Advisors and your host for Upticks. Today is our 50th episode, Estate Planning with Jason Salinardi. Okay, as you can see, we have subbed out Corey this week. Uh, for our special guest, Jason Salinardi. Jason, thank you for joining us. Uh, Welcome. Thanks. I feel privileged. I didn't realize it was the 50th episode. Yeah, it's a milestone. It's a big honor. Yeah. Yep. So I figured I would bump Corey and let him work, <laughs> and uh, I get to do the fun part of the day. So perfect. Thanks for being here. Absolutely. And please forgive my casual attire. I'm uh, taking golf, uh, clients golfing right after this. So uh, I figured to make it efficient, I would just wear my golf clothes to work. Well, part of being the boss. Hey, you look good. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Uh, so today's topic of the show is estate planning. And Jason, before we dive into that, I wanted you to maybe go over your business and, and maybe a little bit of your personal background. You're with Sandberg Phoenix here in Kansas City. And maybe you can tell our listeners kind of why you chose to be an attorney in the first place and, and kind of go over, you know, what brought you to where you are today. Yeah. So my, my background, um, I grew up in the St. Louis area. I've been in Kansas City now uh, almost 13 years um, I was a, an accounting major, tax, going to be just a straight tax nerd. Right. Um, and sometimes, you know, life throws your curveballs. And the way I got into estate planning is uh, in my, was during my second year of law school, uh, I actually lost my uh, oldest brother. Unfortunately, he worked in the, in the World Trade Center and, and yeah. well, we, we lost him on 9-11. And so, you know, through that personal tragedy, I sort of saw from a, both a professional level and a personal level of the importance of estate planning. So it kind of steered me in, in that direction. And literally, I've been an estate planning attorney since, you know, 2004. So, um, but it's just, it's the ability to, you know, help people, give them the peace of mind that, you know, if something happens, then, you know, they, they got a plan in place. And, you know, from, uh, you know, death and taxes is, is you know, not the not a fun topic for people, but right. sometimes, you know, two things you can't avoid. Right. right. It's everybody, right? Yeah. It impacts so. everybody. And I'm so sorry to hear about your yeah. loss. I think all of us remember where we were on yeah. 9-11 and obviously it strikes more home for you. Yeah. So, um, but wow, I didn't realize, uh, we've known each other for a while. I didn't realize you've been an attorney since uh, 2004. Yeah. So that's, uh, this is your 15th year of practicing. Yeah. Yeah. We're a lot less hair over those times. <laughs> <you can tell. laughs> so, uh, so MU for your undergrad? Yes, yeah, so University of Missouri for my undergrad and my uh, JD. And Fantastic. then I did my, uh, my master's in law and taxation here at UMKC. All right, very good. So, and how long have you been with Sandberg Phoenix? So I've been with Sandberg Phoenix uh, almost three years now. Okay, and they are they based in St. Louis? Yeah, the home office is St. Louis. Uh, we've got an office here in Kansas City. We've got uh, you know 20 attorneys here in this office. Uh, we have almost 170 attorneys overall. That, wow. You know, like any firm, you know, do, Depending on what clients needs are, we've probably got somebody that could help, whether it be employment law, uh, real estate, uh, any type of litigation. Uh, obviously, I'm part of our wealth planning team. Gotcha. So you're in the estate planning and wealth planning, but your attorneys uh, have various backgrounds and various backgrounds. So you know, I tell clients, you know, we all, you know, I stay in my lane. So right, if something's getting out of my lane, I could refer, refer it over. To, you know, refer them into somewhere that someone who's an expert in that area. Perfect. And uh, I know you're married with children, so... Married, yeah. I've got three uh, three beautiful girls. Awesome. Uh, they're 10, 8, and 5, so they uh, are keeping us busy. You know? <laughs> I bet they are. Getting into the summertime is always good. Um, we have a little bit of a lull with all the, the activities, but it starts right back up here real soon in August. But, yeah, I uh, love spending time with with them lucky that they're just they're great girls yeah that's awesome yeah well Thank that's uh, that's very exciting i'm sure it's a enjoyable part of your life and oh, your yeah. family um, so i did want to preface our conversation with that you know everything that we talk about today uh, should be just taken as a general statement none of this should be used as advice as always you know meet with your wealth advisor meet with your estate planning attorney to get specific advice for you but you know, you know, I meet with all of our clients and I've got a very, um, you know, personal relationship and we always bring up wills and trusts. And, and when I'm asking a new client, do you have a will or a trust? They'll say yes and, or, or no. And, and they often think that they're the same thing. And so maybe can, you can help our audience explain on a broad level the difference between the two 
so that they can understand. Because I think a lot of people get confused, and maybe that's their attorney doing a poor job of explaining exactly what they're doing. And I'd like people to understand what the difference of the two are. Yeah, so both a will and a trust, as simple as it is a tool that is used to transfer your stuff, your, whether it be a car or a house, is, is basically is to transfer those assets at your death to where you want it to go. Okay. Um, the big difference uh, is that anything that's gonna pass pursuant to a will, we've gotta go through the probate court and the probate process to accomplish the transfer. Uh, if we use a trust, then most of the time, right, if done right, we could use, we could do all that without the court, with probate court and probate process. So really it comes down, I, I always use a trust because it's a much more efficient and effective tool than just a will. Gotcha. Now who, so if you don't use the courts to administer the trust, if something happens to somebody, who takes care of all of that? Then if you're not going to a judge to determine what so happens. that's the thing is, is the clients are able to be in controls because they're going to appoint either a, a family member or they could appoint uh, you know a trust company or somebody to help, and then it's also a it's it's working with you, it's working with me, it's working with their CPA. It's a sort of it becomes a team effort to help them make sure that everything gets done. You know, it's just it's a lot of paperwork. But the important thing is, is it stays private because you know anything you file with the court becomes public record. Right. Uh, so there's a big privacy issue, and plus, it's a process, right? You know, you lose a loved one. It's 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 emotional, right? It's mm -hmm. it's traumatic, and the last thing you want to deal with is is wait. You know, is this long drawn? Make it a very long drawn out process. Um, and with a will, there's just the probate process is what it is, right? We can't. It's controlled by statutes, and we have to follow it. And usually, it's going to last. You know, at least six months to wow. more likely a year or so. Um, with the trust, it, it's you know getting the paperwork from where we need and sort of we're, we're able to work more on their schedule than having a schedule dictated yeah. to us. So why do people still get just wills when they're doing estate planning? Uh, I think a lot of it's um, just miseducation, okay. um, yeah. being um, uneducated about what the differences are and, and taking the time to, to learn about it. Um, or even if they do, there, there are still ways that you could use a will and keep it out of the probate system. It's just, it's just taking the time to work with professionals and take the time to think about it. I mean, I think the, the tricky thing also is people don't like to sit around and think about dying no. and what's going to happen. Right. So I think a lot of it's just, you know, the, what's the path of least resistance and, right? And, you know, with, there's the, you know, you've, you've seen in all industries, right? There's the advent of, hey, the, why can just go online and, do this real cheaply and should be fine, right? Right. But you know, a lot of times you just don't without that personal um, touch and someone understanding exactly what your circumstances are, what your needs are. It's hard to get that from a preset. I agree. Check Something the box cookie cutter, right? Right. So you get what you pay for, and I agree with that completely. So what does a trust? What does that normally cost people when they're when they're looking at getting one? I know it's probably different based on complexities, but. What can they expect to pay if they are? Yeah, it's, I mean, and again, there, there's a lot that goes into it. You know, you're probably looking at a few thousand dollars. Okay. But as compared to if you just have a will and you have to go to probate, couldn't that end up costing you it's or your cost, family at least? It's going to cost the family the same, if not more. And and I one of the things I always tell clients is, is doing the estate plan is it's something you're doing for your loved ones, right? Because you're basically doing it so that way when something happens, they don't have to deal with it and all that. Right. Um, I, I tell people all the time, the cost is going to be there no matter what, whether you do yeah, it you now can't avoid it, right? or whether your family does it after you're gone, Yep, it's going to be there. Right. So it's just a question of whether, again, do you want to, do you want to set it up for them now? It's almost like, you know, you see a lot, of, it's like almost doing like a prepaid funeral, Yeah. right? That way your family doesn't have to deal with all that stuff. Right. It's already taken care of. Same concept. It's, yeah. It's a, or paying off like, your mortgage so they don't, aren't burdened right. with that afterwards or, or whatever. Yeah. There's be. all that kind of stuff is where you could sort of do it and have it set up and, and so i hear another big misconception is that people think that they need to have hundreds of millions of dollars to have a trust right you hear these yeah. terms trust fund baby or you know and they think well jake you know i've got two million dollars as my net worth i don't have enough money to to get a trust what do you say to somebody that that's thinking that way i mean i think everybody to me if if you have anybody with minor children 
should absolutely have right. trust. Right, do you trust your 10 year old to make important financial well, right. decisions? Right, you can't, right? It's, right. It's, again, there's just all these misconceptions. Um, the other thing is, is there's a lot of, of protection that we could build in for your children from, you know, again, if they're minors. Uh, maybe, they're, maybe they're adults, but maybe they're not mature enough to handle sure, the money. Sure, absolutely. We, a 21 year old, 25 year old, I get right. it, yeah. Um, sometimes they're maybe 35 and, <laughs> right, and not, right. not ready. Um, but we could also use the trust to protect um, your children, your grandchildren from things they may, they can't predict. Uh, divorces. That's a big one, right? Bankruptcies. Well, I mean, statistically, right, I think the divorce rate in our country is, hovers around 50%, right. if not higher. So if you get more than one child, statistically speaking, one of them will unfortunately probably have to go through a divorce. And, right, I know I, know I don't want to see eventually what I work hard for go to an ex-in-law or something, right? So I want to make sure it stays with, with my, my children and my grandchildren. Yeah, it makes sense. So if, you, if you're not thrilled with your son-in-law or daughter-in-law and you want to protect your assets from a, yeah. your, your child being harmed, you would set up a trust so that that way the money that your yeah. heirs inherit would be protected, right? From, yeah, so there's, from again, there's a lot of different ways. There, there's a lot more to it than just, um, you know, people, I think you also they hear the word estate and they think of, well, I don't have a giant estate. Right, right. And so some of it's just the term, you know, old agent terminology. Um, so the dollar amount has nothing to do with it. Dollar doesn't have anything to do with it. I mean, there are certain situations where, yeah, if there's if there's not a lot, yeah, we probably don't need a trust. Right. But, um, you know, I, I know working with a lot of younger clients, you know, they they will say, well, I don't really have a lot, but what they always what they always forget about is the life insurance. Right. Right. I know. I'm worth a lot more dead than alive at this point because the life insurance. <laughs> right, so if something right. happened to me and or me and my wife, there's quite well, a your bit. Your state's going to be. There's quite a yes. bit a lot now, a lot more money now that's going to my children that I absolutely want to make sure is protected. That's a really good them. point. Yeah. So no, that's, that's smart. One of those things that, that people just don't think through. Speaking of that, we've had a lot of changes with the tax code. Uh, is there anything that's impacted uh, your job as far as estate planning in the last couple of years regarding taxes? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, the estate tax laws have changed really since 2012 significantly, which, which is a good thing for almost because what it's basically done is, is it's taken the, any estate tax worry for people out of the equation. Um, and just, you know, the estate tax is the tax that the government imposes on the transfer of wealth at death. And for, you know, the, we're talking about you have to be, you know, north of, you know, $15 million wow. before you even have to worry about an estate tax. Is that well, an individual or is that a husband and wife? That's a husband and wife. Individually right now, it's the exemption amount is 11.4 million. Wow. Sitting here today. So with, and with a husband and wife, the way the tax laws are now, we could pretty easily share those exemptions. So we're talking 22 plus million. Wow. Um, which I think, you know, I think the IRS estimates about, you know, less than 1%. Right. Fall into the fall category into above category. that. Right. And, you know, we're, we're sitting, you know, here in Kansas and Missouri at the state level, there are no state level state taxes. Okay, where we are. that's good to know. Now, so, again, depending on what state you are, sure, that can be different. But yeah. here we don't have to worry about it. So, you know, for most people, it's sort of taken that that it's not an issue for most people. So it, it actually sit, so I always tell people, don't let the tax tail wag the dog. Well, it's easy now just to have a two minute conversation and say, well, don't worry about it. Now, again, that's the law today. Right. It could change. It could change. You know, just, you know, when I started practicing, that exemption amount was um, a little over a million dollars at a 55% rate. Wow. And now we're at 11 plus million at a 40% tax rate. So, you know. Wow, that's crazy how much it's changed. So if somebody had $2 million when you started, that a million dollars over would be taxed at 55% potentially? Fi yes. Wow. That's yeah. crazy. And I think I always... Remember this? I think it was George Steinbrenner passed away. Was he the owner of the Yankees, right? He, and owner, he died in 2010 when there was actually no estate tax because the way they were the, figuring it out, right? There were the way the laws was written because the Bush tax cuts had had started ramping it up, and then there was this with like the current law. There was a, there was a built-in sunset where in 2010 there was no estate tax. Right. So he well, had no issue. So or his he, family had no issue. He had no, he, yeah, he yeah, passed away. But he passed away, and the Yankees went to his heirs. Without any estate tax. Wow, it's crazy. Yeah, that's crazy how much they change the laws, and so that's that's why again I think it pays to work with an estate planning attorney, somebody that's looking at this constantly, and you know is aware of the rules and make sure that you can make some good decisions. Yeah. 
I did want to talk also about maybe some quick wins. So let's say somebody, they've thought about a will or a trust, and maybe they don't have one yet, and they understand they need to make an appointment. But what are some things that they can do today to maybe just to make sure that they've got some of the bases covered when you're looking at their yeah. estate plan? The important thing is look at the beneficiary designations on your life insurance, on your 401k, on your IRA, on yep. your Roth IRA, because it's very important to remember whoever you have listed on those beneficiary forms, that's where the money's going. That's so, good. That's a good point. Um, and those are very easy ways to uh, keep everything out of the probate courts. Um, but and a lot of times people, they, they forget about them, right? You start a new job and sure. they put you know, a mountain of paperwork in front of you and you just, right, you're just trying to get through it. Yep. Or I see, you know, I've seen this a lot lately is where somebody works for a company and the company switches the provider, right? The administrator. Sure. Yeah. And again, you've got to redo the paperwork and you're not thinking through it. Yeah, it makes good sense. We do at Falcon Wealth Advisors with all of our clients every time that we review with them or meet with them, which is twice a year, we review those beneficiaries. That's... And your, your wealth advisor should be doing that. But again, take it to the next level. If you've got a 401k, your bank accounts, um, I think you can even put something on your car or your you home. Could, you, you could you could do a transfer on death designation on your car. Um, we could record uh, transfer on death or beneficiary deeds, depending on what state you live in, right. what they're called, to transfer your house. I mean, re in reality, there's not, there's not an asset out there that we can't exactly. add a transfer on death or have a Makes beneficiary sense. form, but it's just going through yeah, it and, and people don't do it. Yeah, and that's where the process is if we, you know, is making sure that whether you have a will or a trust, then it's making sure that those beneficiary forms, everything is working together the way yep. it's supposed to. Yeah, it's a, a packaged up as a plan. Right. I, so I did have another question. So what if somebody already has a will or a trust? I mean, do you recommend that they review these things or is it, you know what, I got a trust, checked it off the list, I don't need to worry about this ever again? No, I think that, so I was, is, is my recommendation, Three years, five years at the absolute most. Okay. You need, you need to come. You need to take a look and review it. So every three to five years, you should sit down. Now, do you have to work with the original attorney that drew it up, or do you at, do you at your firm review other documents? Yeah, what happens all the time is where um, uh, clients will send me what they have. You know, I was again, I'm I'm a visual person, so I try to take everything in a one page diagram. And say this is where you're at. You know, th this is who you have acting you know, as, as your trustees or who's gonna make medical decisions for you and financial decisions if you can't. Are you still good with, you know, are these the people that you'd want? And this is how the money, here's where the money's going and how it's going to them. Right. Is this what you want? And then we look at, you know, your house, you know, how is it titled? Because that's probably something that gets overlooked. Yeah, I'm and then sure. we start, it kind of, mm -hmm. you know, we, you know, work in conjunction, you know, with the advisor, say, hey, what's, who's on the beneficiary forms? Let's make sure it's up to date. You know, I tell people a lot of times, outdated, is a lot of times worse than no Good plan point. at all because I mean I've had multiple situations where you know people bring in documents when you know they set it up when they had one child when well, now they have three. Oh yeah, and so and, one child made well get something. they'll still they get everything. But the plans usually work the other children in, but they're not you know or different children have different needs and whatnot. Um, or the other thing that happens a lot is where um, say a, uh, someone went through a divorce or something. Right. Did they take off their ex-spouse on all their beneficiary forms? Yeah. I have clients going through that right now, and that's one of the first things I talked about. I was like, hey, if we want to split this up differently, let's do it now yeah. um, so that we don't have an yeah. issue down the road. I mean, I have situations on. where an ex-spouse is still listed as the person to be making health care decisions for the individual. Right. Yes, yeah, so all that stuff yeah, needs to be It just updated. needs to be considered and thought through. So every three to five years is Every what three to five years, Perfect. except five years, I think would be at, at most. Good. Good, and then um, I've got another question. This is a little bit more complex, but I, I have a lot of clients ask me too. So they, they're creating a trust. So if you already have a trust and, and you're familiar with that, how that works, what about naming a trustee? Do they use a bank or corporate trustee or should they use a family member? Um, it's tough to give a blanket, just this is what you should do. It really depends on the circumstances. You know, People have to understand is that trustee, there's, there's work to be done. It's not... You're just not named a trustee and there's nothing to do. I mean, that trustee has reporting requirements. Uh, they right. may be the ones making decisions on how to distribute the money, when to distribute it. Um, and the, they're a fiduciary, right? You know, I'm a fiduciary for my clients, you're a fiduciary right. for your clients. That trustee is a fiduciary for those beneficiaries. So if something goes wrong, that's who the beneficiaries are going to look to to make it right or right, that's just unfortunately it happens a lot of times they're going to assume sure. somebody's looking for somebody to sue it's the trustee so right 
sometimes it makes more sense to name a, a professional, you know, a corporate fiduciary, a, a bank, because right, they're gonna have that, that's what they do every right. They have trust officers, that's their job every day. Um, so they know what they're doing, they have that level of expertise. Um, but again, the other side is with the family members, the family members are also gonna know the family dynamics. Right. They're gonna have a better personal relationship. So we could do, sometimes we could do co-trustees. Mm, that's a good idea. So it's just, it's a very, you know, case by case, but just working through and making sure you're thinking through those, the families are thinking through those decisions. Gotcha, and none of this happens until something happens to you, correct? correct. So you're in complete control of your trust. You're in 100% control. You until know, something happens to you. I'm in, I'm, my wife and I 100% control of ours. If something happens to one of us, the the other Survivor spouse, up, yes, right. Then we're talking about after. Yeah, so after, is, when your kids inherit the money, do they have complete control, or do you want to use a corporate trustee right. to maybe help them? And, that, and that's where it's important to review it over time, right? I've got little kids, right? So they're they're not old enough, but you know, thirty years from now, maybe, right? You know, we could You'll let, let them be in charge. Right, right. That's the importance of right. If, if, if I don't review it, and now thirty years from now, and I've got somebody that who knows, you know, is who what the relationship is. Right. Yeah, that's good. That's very good. All right, so now I wanted to start a fun segment of our show. I, I called it the Bird of Prey Lightning Round, right? Because a falcon is supposedly a bird of prey. So I, I wrote down 10 questions I want to fire at you, and we've okay. got 60 seconds to answer them. I don't have a clock on me, but we'll, right. we'll be quick we'll... about it is kind of the deal. So I just want you to say kind of it's more fun. Some of these are serious and some of them are fun. Uh, but I wanted to kind of get um, just your initial thoughts, right? Okay. So don't you don't need to yeah. take much stock on it. So... Um, all right, so we'll follow, follow, fire through these. So, favorite food? Pizza. Best vacation? Disney World. Retire when? 60. Okay. Wills or trusts? Trusts. Okay, I've got that. Golf, soccer, or tennis? Tennis. Okay. KC or St. Louis? Oh, man. I can't answer that. All right. Chiefs record this year? 11 and 5. Okay, why law school? Tax. Stocks or bonds? Stocks. And your number one piece of advice you would give somebody? Um, live life to the fullest every day. Good, good, I like that. Oh, that you did good. well, yeah. I think you did a great job. Right. So that was my first go at our Falcon Wealth Advisors sponsored <laughs> Bird of Prey Lightning <laughs> Round. So that was good. Thanks for, thanks for playing along yeah. with me. Okay, so I do have one uh, one final question for you today. I know you're busy and you've probably yeah. got to get in the office and i got to go play golf. So um, I, Corey and I started this and we asked one of our teammates, uh, or a couple of our teammates this before, but i like to talk about uh, if you remember the first time you learned about money or what your first lesson was about money. I, I don't know if this is necessarily the first lesson, but I know this is the one that stuck with me and still always sticks with me mm -hmm. and that I, I know I will be the first thing I teach my kids. Good. Never carry credit card debt. I've Good never one. not paid off a credit card, right? So every month you're never I've never carried it once. So was that from your your father or yeah, your mother it's, or it's from my it yeah, but my parents. Both of them? Both oh yeah. And they live their lives that way. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. So good. So you you don't you don't flow to balance at all. No. No matter what's going on no in your matter. life. There's that credit card's been paid off. So now, again, Disney I, World and all that's paid off. Yep. There's no there's no, 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 no. the Good. No, no credit card debt. Good for you. Never. That's good advice. So, and what, do you remember what age you learned that? Um, was it college or was it? It was right. Earth? It was right. It was right in that transition between high school and college. I remember um, I was going on a trip and my dad had you know given me a credit card as hey this is a an emergency obviously if you need it it's there um, and was very you know sort of took the time to you know how you know hey this yes it's it's money but it's not free money right and explain you know the how you know if you don't pay it off you know, the interest rates and how high they are and whatnot and just sort of taught me the the negatives of carrying that credit card debt. But also it was important, you know, he wanted me to get one because it's, it's a way to start establishing good credit and sure. whatnot. And, you know, you you pay that off. It's a way to start establishing credit. So, you know, I don't know why it's one of those things that that's, stuck with me and I learned and just carried it through. And That's a really good habit. So, yeah, I would tell that to a lot of people. That's a good one. Yeah. That's a good lesson. So thank you. I don't think we've had that one before. Ah, good. So perfect. Thank you for sharing that. And, and as always, if you can find uh, Jason at Sandberg Phoenix. Do you have a contact that you prefer people reach out to you, a phone number or email? Or uh, Email is, is, is easiest. Perfect. And it's my 
first in the J. Salinardi at sandbergphoenix.com. Perfect. And of course, you can reach out to Falcon yeah. Wealth Advisors, and we're happy to share Jason's contact information. You can follow us on Facebook, Instagram, uh, LinkedIn, and Twitter. And you can find me on Twitter at Jake Falcon CRPC. And as always, thank you so much for tuning in, and we hope you all have a great week.